Um, so guys, I know it's the last day, the last session, and we've got quite a sparse turnout today. I really appreciate you guys making the time. Um, what we're going to cover today uh, should be of value to you. So which of you saw Ironviz this week? Just raise your hands if you saw Ironviz. Great. Now, wasn't that awesome? Didn't that have a great impact? Uh, so I'm going to introduce my co-host in a minute. But what we're going to cover today is what is Viz Games um, and why this is so impactful. Is it complex or is it easy to put together? Hopefully the, the title of our talk should let you know it's pretty straightforward to put together. Um, we're going to be sharing some stories about how our customers have been using Viz Games to impact their community and proficiency. And then um, we'll be looking at, at a closing and a QA. So let me introduce myself. Um, the uh, Scatterplot Boy is what I've been aptly named. I partnered with uh, Dave Ward, who we call Viz Games Man, gentleman standing over here. And he's basically the, the, our champion within the customer success team that's helped us put together this checklist. So you guys have got a checklist. Um, it's pretty straightforward to, to put together um, Viz Games. So I joined Tableau in January of last year, so I, I still consider myself a newbie, even though I'm not a newbie. Um, I've had 20 years of analytics and BI experience. Uh, I used to work for Visa out of, out of England and then moved across here five years ago. I'm based out of uh, San Diego, in fact. Um, but I, I love to, to help our organizers, uh, sorry, our customers uh, see and understand data. It's just been a total change of culture and, and love working with, with Tableau as a platform. Um, so before I go into what is those games, maybe just a little story. You can understand my accent is a little bit strange. It's South African originally, five years in England, so that got a little bit tweaked. And now my, my kids are sounding American, so I've got to change the way I speak because otherwise they don't understand me. Um, but my, my co-host, who I'll be introducing you to in a minute, actually lives in New Jersey. And it was only from visiting New Jersey that I realized uh, what it takes for me to help people understand my name. So I would go to a, a Starbucks out of Jersey, and uh, they were saying, well, what do you want us to write on the cup? And they, I'd say, Adrian. They go, Edgar? No, no, Adrian. Edwin? Adrian. And then the, the, the barrister said, oh, Adrian, like Rocky. I love you, Adrian. So now when I go order my coffee, and they ask me what my name is, I say, I love you, Adrian. It's Adrian. So they get my name right. <laughs> All right. Who has run Viz Games? Awesome. You guys have run Viz Games. Who has no clue what Viz Games is? Like, all right, so, all right, perfect. So what, what we're hoping to achieve today is to help you feeling excited, inspired, and confident about running Viz Games at the end of today. Um, but what is Viz Games? Viz Games is basically Iron Viz hosted by yourselves, the customers. So a mini version of Ironviz. And um, as you can see from you know, this image here, here I was partnering with actually Sudarshan sitting at the back there. One of his customers, we ran a Viz Games uh, activity as part of a tablet day. So typically Viz Games is used in conjunction with a hackathon, uh, a lunch and learn, some kind of custom activity where you now want to create a wow factor. So you include an Ironviz competition. Um, you'll see at the bottom there is actually Dave's customer, Viz Games Man. Um, so we run Viz Games quite regularly with our customers as part of community and proficiency building activities. Here's another view. You can clearly see. So there are participants you know, engaged with a community event. And on the right-hand side, there's three competitors. So it doesn't look like Ironviz. It's not as snazzy. But uh, it's definitely entertaining. And as you can see, there's a ton of people from that Tableau community engaged uh, and learning about Tableau. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to my co-host, the one, the only, Captain Outlier. Can you give her a hand? Yeah. Captain Outlier in the yeah, house. She is definitely an outlier. Not only has she been a competitor, a judge, she now is also part of the Tableau team, and she hosts Tableau Day and this game. So over to you. 
Go over to me. So you think Adrian's tough. Try having a name like Shauna, spelled S-E-A-N-N-A. It is Shauna, I promise. I have a twin brother named Sean. I live in New Jersey, but uh, I'm Canadian, eh? So <laughs> uh, husband, animal lover, uh, hairless cats, best pets ever, by the way. Wonderful Welsh Terrier, bit of a horseback rider. And I'm also a data geek. And that's, does anybody recognize who I'm standing with here in this bottom picture? Anybody? Oh, the data geeks in the house are hiding. I know Sudarshan knows. He's nodding like crazy. Who is that? Do you know? You were nodding. No? That is the great Stephen Few. And if none of you have heard of Stephen Few, he is the probably the father of modern dashboard design and talks about the effective design of dashboards as a monitoring tool for operational processes. If you don't know Stephen Few, I strongly suggest you check him out on his blog, perceptualedge.com. And this is like my total geek moment because I went to Berkeley to meet him. And Berkeley is just such a wonderfully aromatic place. <laughs> and, uh, and I was able to have some fun with him. But you know what? We're here today to make Viz Games easy and awesome. And like anything else, trying to organize an event can be really, really scary, right? I mean, we put this show on, and it takes like hundreds of people, thousands actually, yeah. um, to put Tableau Conference 19 on. But Viz Games doesn't have to be that complex. It doesn't have to be that difficult. And often, when you're trying to learn something or do something for the first time, it's a lot like, well, riding a horse. And sometimes you're you know, getting up to the jump, and you really want to make sure that you sail Sail over the, oh, that one made it into the deck, huh? Yeah, it did. It this did. is me <laughs> trying to sail over my first, well, my first jump of that type on my horse radar. Uh, you can see that um, we call this an unplanned dismount in the horse world. So now you know some horse terms for anyone that has horsey friends. We're here to make sure that this does not happen to you when you run your first biz games. We want it to be easy, and we want it to be more awesome than hitting the dirt and taking a face full. So why is this so impactful? Why is Viz Games so impactful? And I'm going to hand it back to Scatterplot Boy to talk well, about the impact. Yeah, I'll just talk briefly about this slide, but I think then you need to take us into the kind of blueprint alignment. Absolutely. Um, so as you can see from this collage, uh, there have been a number of customers in the short time that I've been with Tableau where we, we've been able to run Viz Games. And the impact has been amazing. Um, and as you can see, there, the people that are enthusiastic we actually had a Viz Games at one of our customers, and they had Iron Viz, um, what are they called? Those noisemakers, yeah. those, you know, the ones that flap and they crack. They actually brought them crack. out. And uh, I mean, here you can see uh, another customer of ours out of Tampa. The one on the left there is in Thousand Oaks in California. We've run some Viz Games in Chicago. But it is impactful. Now, I think to kind of put into context, the theme of this, this conference has been about data culture, it's been about blueprints. And maybe that's probably where we need to like line this up so that it's clear. We, oh, yeah, we should be talking about Blueprint right yeah. now, right? Yeah, let's We're talk sure. about Blueprint. Who here has heard of Blueprint? All right, who here has been to the Blueprint booth? Some of you who's played Blueprint Golf? Yeah, Blueprint, <laughs> all right, yeah. Those little, little, little par three challenging courses out there on the, on the floor. So yeah, we wouldn't be um, responsible if we didn't talk to you about how this game fits into Blueprint, because it does. And it's a really important part of our Blueprint. And um, let's make this a little more interactive. You know, it's the last session. We're all getting ready to yeah. go home, hopefully, or you know, extend our stay and maybe win a few million, right? Um, where do you think this game's impacts here on the Blueprint? For those of you that learned a little bit about Blueprint this week, and don't worry about getting it wrong because we're going to help you get it right. So, engagement. Well, community. Ah, engagement. Came. Wow. Okay. Well, I, I'm not sure what we're doing standing up here, Adrian. These guys are pros. Yeah, they're really pros. You're absolutely right. It impacts us in two ways on the Blueprint. The first one is in our proficiency stream. And in proficiency, we really do talk about um, you know, enabling proficiency as well as engagement and community. On the proficiency side, so this one's a little more subtle. Uh, I'm going to tell you a story in a minute about uh, how it enabled my proficiency with Tableau. I've been a Tableau user for about six years um, and a Viz Games champion. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. I've been, up, I've been up there. I've done it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and the story becomes even cooler in a minute, I promise. Um, but how it helps enable proficiency is that when you have to get up on a stage in front of 100 of your closest friends, maybe more, um, at some events it's up to six, six or 700 people, you really want to up your game, right? You're not going to get up there and embarrass yourself. You're really going to dig into what makes Tableau drive. You're going to learn how to do it really, really quickly. And in some cases, you're going to learn the important keyboard shortcuts. Did you know Tableau has keyboard shortcuts? Yes, oh yeah, yeah, some of you, yeah, some of you found them. It does, and when you're trying to build a viz in about 30 minutes, keyboard shortcuts are your friend. 
So you start learning things, and you'll also start to kind of game the system a little bit, right? You're like, hmm, what are the judges going to vote for? Right? Did you notice that in IronViz? People adopting different strategies? Well, these are all things that elevate your proficiency because now you're learning about the best ways in which to craft a viz for your audience. So you're making that connection between how you build a viz, but also what the best practices are in generating that viz because your judges are going to vote for you on best practices, they're going to vote for you on your storytelling, which is a really big, important component of becoming a data-driven culture. Or they're going to just like you because you're a nice person, maybe, or, you know, or in my case, you dressed up in a great costume. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously that speed to insight or speed to impact has real life applications. I mean, if you can get business insight faster and in a way that makes more sense, your proficiency has a direct impact <laughs> on your bottom line. So, so okay. yeah, it definitely has a proficiency aspect. What else? What else can you think? Well, I mean, our audience can tell us right away, right? Two things. What do we say? The next two things are engagement and community. All right, we are still okay. Good. I know yeah. my voice. The party last night. Dev's <laughs> on stage. I was. It's getting a little rough, but we're gonna we're gonna get you to three fifteen. Don't worry. But yeah, the next way it impacts, and this is much more direct impact, right? Is on community. There is like nothing quite like being on that Iron Viz stage and cheering for your competitors, right? Like you feel a sense of belonging. You feel a sense like you, you are a part of that process, that somehow you own their success. And all of these things help you feel connected to your community. And Viz Games is such a great way of doing that because it gives something for everybody. So it gives something for people like us who want to be on stage. <laughs> That's right, being all confident and, and uh, trying not to shake too much as we're presenting. Um, for the people who could be like, horrified by the thought of getting up in front of their peers and doing something cool. Um, it gives them the opportunity to be an audience member or a suvisor, a coach, a mentor, or even a judge. So it helps you connect in so many different ways of the community and gives you so many different roles. Engagement, of course, engagement. You know, people come to this and they see what Tableau can do in 30 minutes and they see how these visits are put together. And look, we're not, we're not all naive enough to think like, I can do that tomorrow. Yeah, 30 minutes, I can build that thing. But we start to realize what's possible, and it's the art of the possible that inspires us, and that starts to drive engagement. You know, maybe I will pick up Tableau. Maybe I will try to do that. Maybe I'll try to replicate that thing. The Viz Games that I was in, um, the competitor um, built this great hour chart. He, he used a sunburst chart as the hours of a clock, and it was so cool, and I still have no idea to this day how to replicate it, but boy, did I ever try. <laughs> Uh, I'll have to pick up the phone and call them. But you know, you learn some new things, you learn some new techniques and tips that you want to try and take back at home. So absolutely in, in engagement as well. Um, so, you know, yes, yeah, so I'm, uh, you know, easy. Let's talk about the easy part because now you're probably thinking, okay, but that's a lot of moving parts, right? You got judges, you got competitors, you've got um, audience members, there's a venue, there's like prizes, there's like noisemakers, there's like, it seems like there's all this stuff. Yeah. So, so it's all of a sudden starting to seem a little complex, Adrian. It, it does seem complex. And so raise your hand if you think, would it be very difficult to put on those games at your who, who thinks it would be complex and onerous and challenging? That's, yeah, great. Thank, yes, thank you. Everybody's yeah, playing I, along. I love it. You <laughs> mentioned that you've, you've run a Viz Games, you've run a Viz Games. Was it challenging? The hardest part was, hardest part was yeah. Mm -hmm. So Good data set. The hardest part, sorry, the hardest part was finding a good data set, is what he said. Yeah. So two yeah. months into joining Tableau, so January last year, one of my customers said, Adrian, we have a Tableau Summit in August. I want you to run and help us run a Viz Games. We'd like an Iron Viz equivalent at our, at our Tableau Summit. Um, and so, you know, I had a panic attack. I kind of felt like Peter Parker, you know, you know what is my superpower? How am I gonna help this out? So I reached out to Dave Ward. I reached out to our collaborative community, found out how is he running this at other customers? And I can't mention their names, but he's been doing this for like four or five years. And he and I put together a checklist, which is what you see in front of you. Now, it's quite detailed. But there's just a couple of key highlights that I wanted to share. You need to have the stakeholders agree, hey, this is valuable. So find your key champion stakeholders and understand that there's value in bringing the community together. Stakeholder engagement. Second thing, find your competitors. Use your data. See who's publishing you know, well-used dashboards. Um, if you're running office hours or doctor sessions, invite those people to put together a team or compete on, on their own. Use your data to find champions and competitors. Or 
uh, like what I did in this case, is I invited every single Tableau user at this customer, and we actually had an oversubscription. We had nine teams, and we had to kind of do what we did at Einvers. We had to like whittle it down to get to three teams on the summit in that August of last year. So, um, so what you're seeing there is a detailed, you know, every single thing that you would need to think about. Uh, so once you've got your teams, you need judges. He has real cool value as you get uh, senior execs to be on your judges panel. I'm going to share an example with another customer where that had a major impact. So they get visibility and they get engaged um, in terms of understanding what you guys are doing with, with data and Tableau. So once you have your judges, um, you now need to kind of just run a know before you go. You guys kind of saw what that know before you go was like for Tableau Conference. You run a 30-minute session to tell them, this is the data. These are the business questions you need to answer. We're going to give it to you two weeks beforehand. Practice, and you'll have 30 minutes or 45 minutes, whatever you decide. It doesn't have to be 20 minutes. But it's got to be within an hour. You, got to, you run Viz Games as an hour event. And you do things like you interview the judges panel, you interview the competitors, the audience gets to ask questions. You throw out swag, and you make it an exciting event. You have music playing. And that's why we kind of dressed up a little bit crazy, because it is a fun, wow factor event. Mm -hmm. And you, know, you, you cannot underestimate the impact. And when I share uh, another story, you'll see how that snowballs. Um, I was chatting to uh, one of the academic leads here, uh, Dan, sitting at the back there. And we actually have a ton of resources on our website, Viz Games in a Box. So if you just search on Tableau's website, there are tons of Viz Games resources, um, just to kind of give you a taste of what it might look like. Oh, magic. Superpowers right yeah, there. Yeah, superpower. So here's one PDF, but I mean, there's, there's so many resources. Uh, it tells you, you know, who it's for, how to run it, um, you know, select a theme. There's tons of suggested themes. How do you get your, your competitors? How do you find judges? Um, the key thing around data, there's a ton of options. And I've had customers that use their own data, but you can use public domain data. And this, this Games in a Box resource that's on our website gives you, you know, great ideas to um, source data. Tableau Public is a great option for sourcing data as well. Um, and you'll see on page two of the checklist that we provided, this is the the judging score sheet that you saw at Ironverse. And you just judge it in the same way. Okay, not 30 points for each category, but 10 points for um, analysis, 10 points for storytelling, 10 points for design. And, and you may want to use a voting app to let your audience actually um, also you know, provide their input. Um, what else is on this resource? So yeah. And I mean, the checklist even says at the bottom, announce your winners and give them prizes. So make sure you've got prizes. Uh, yeah. The most important thing is, 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 you know, have fun with us. Now. Well, I, I'm looking at you with some skepticism here. You are? I am. Okay. Do you know why? Why is that? Well, I work with companies that are globally distributed. Okay. With people in, well, South Africa. Yeah. And New Jersey. Yes. And Canada. the West Coast. Can oh, even Canada. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> in Europe, and they say, well, I mean, this is great, Shauna, but I mean, we can't bring everybody together. The flights yep. are expensive. We have budgets, you know? It's, it's gonna be really expensive to do this. I thought, you know, there's gotta be another way. Yeah. So there is another way. Perfect. Yes. Uh -huh. Announcing a different way of doing biz games. This is great if you have this situation, globally distributed people, people who can't come to the same office at the same time. Um, it's also great if you're just a little too scared to go over that first jump. <laughs> A little worried about falling off, and you want to practice this in a slightly less um, live manner. <clears throat> and this is the way that we do it. We call it Viz Games Submit Ahead. We call it, uh, you know, Viz Games Webinar. Whatever you want to call it. But what happens is, you do the same thing, but you don't have a live competition. What you do is you publish your data sets. You give people a certain amount of time. They submit their vizs to you. Um, following a set of rules that you publish, so same as Viz Games, but they're going to submit them on some kind of a portal, right? Tableau Public is really great for this. Um, if you don't know Tableau Public, it is an amazing resource where people all over the world are building Vizs. They're posting them online. We even curate those and do a Viz of the day. So if you're looking for inspiration on some beautiful, amazing work that's out there by our community, there's Tableau Public. Now it is public, so I would not suggest giving your financial data 
to your organization than encouraging people to post their visits on Tableau Public. Might, might be a career limiting move, but it is an option for you if you're using something a little bit outside of your company. Um, there's also your own Tableau server. Encourage, put a folder up there, encourage people to post there, make that available so that people can see the great work that are being done by the competitors. The benefit of this is you're gonna get many, many more competitors than just three visits. You're gonna have something curated that shows off the skills of the people in your company. It helps people within your company build their portfolios. As we look at career development, yes, VizGames even helps with that. I mean, what doesn't VizGames yeah. do, really? But uh, you know, as people look to move throughout, they're building that portfolio, right? So they publish their views, and then you judge those offline. You have a selection process, you pick the winners, and this is really, really important. Please, 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 if you do this, don't just send an email saying, yay, we did this, yay. Because how many people read all their emails every day? And then how many people follow up on the ones that don't seem to be totally work-related, right? Give these people the opportunity to hear that applause, right? Host a webinar, host mm -hmm. some kind of a gathering online in, you know, in virtual space to allow these contestants to be celebrated and to have some commentary on the business, what you liked, what you didn't like, what some of the best practices were. So this is another way to do viz games uh, in, in something that's a bit lighter weight, especially for those of you that have these globally distributed companies and you want to run it for the first time and you're being faced with a level of skepticism. When people see how awesome this is, they're going to start to want to do this more, more and more live. So there's another yeah, idea I agree. for you. And, and obviously from the keynote we heard this morning, a lot of us are introverts naturally, some are extroverts, some are in between. This is a great way to engage with community members that don't necessarily want to stand up on stage and compete. They can submit ahead. And I, I had uh, a customer this year, in fact, where they had a bunch of teams that were globally distributed, and they submitted but presented to the judges panel, and they were judged, and, and, and uh, you know, a winner was actually selected. So this is a great additional way. I like that superpower. Thank you. That's right. We're giving so, you. I mean, you, you mentioned that, you know, you, you know, we might be a bit nervous standing up here, even though it's just a small crowd and you guys are ready to hit the airport. And, you know, My boss just walked in the door. You yeah, know? true. Yeah, that's also <laughs> true. And, um, but I believe you competed, right? I did. Yeah, yeah. So I tell did. us more about that. I, I oh, hear okay. About that. So, yeah. so what's it like as a competitor? Who here has competed in Viz Games? One of you. Okay. Well, See? I'm going to ask you at the end of this if any of my story resonates with you. This is me. Um, oh, my superpower is chameleon hair, by the way. So I promise, the one in the middle, that's me. I change my hair color all the time. It'll be different next year. So it's purple this year. Okay, I'm going to remember that. <laughs> I'll live up to my promises. So this is a Viz Games, Viz Games stage. Uh, three competitors. Does anyone recognize the one on the, on the, one on, uh, on the right? I think 2018. Anybody here in New Orleans, 2018? Okay, anyone go to Viz Games in 2018 in New Orleans? Iron Viz. Or Iron Viz, sorry. Yeah. Okay, well, Iron Viz, no? Okay, so the guy on the right is uh, Corey Jones, finalist on stage in New Orleans in 2018. So when they asked me if I wanted to compete in Viz Games and my company, I said, sure, that sounds like fun. And then my introversion kicked in. I went, oh, shoot, what am I doing to myself? <laughs> and then they told me, by the way, Corey Jones is going to be on stage. The guy who's competing in New Orleans in the finals for Viz Games is going to be your competition. And I went, well, I'm done. That's it. And instead of being terrified and mortified, which I was, I then decided to become defeated, which I was. And then I decided, well, if I can't win, I might as well have some fun. So that's what I did. Um, so this is a, and I'll tell you, the data set was UFO sightings. So it was kind of cool. That was called out earlier this week as a, as a viz. They should have used mine. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> um, <laughs> The story is this, if you noticed I was wearing this black suit with a white shirt and I was thinking about UFOs, this is, this is where I went. Remember how I was talking about gaming the judges a little bit? I was like, how can I win against Corey Jones? Oh geez, he's gonna be so awesome. Um, I thought, well, if I, I, I'm not gonna build a more beautiful Viz than Corey Jones because forget it, he's on stage at Iron Viz. He won a feed around, there's no way. Yeah, See, what defeated. about storytelling? I mean, that's a key category, right? That's where I went, mm -hmm. exactly, storytelling. I'm just gonna tell a good story. So what if these UFO sightings were aliens? actual aliens. So put on your foil caps. And I said, well, what does that? Men in Black. So here is the alien detection dashboard that I built to help the Men in Black agents, my trainees in the room, to find the aliens they needed to then go interview and figure out how to process these aliens for successful integration onto planet Earth or deportation. Um, so the story was, of course, that the dashboard had been neuralized. You know, in Men in Black, they neuralize you so you forget. So the dashboard had been completely wiped out. But give me 30 minutes, I will fix it. So I built my dashboard in 30 minutes, and this was the result. 
And as you can see here from the, the stage here, we're all pretty, this is the same pictures coming up next. Um, well, before we transition oh. to that, I just wanted to highlight. So, I mean, you kind of targeted Seattle as where the, the aliens will be landing. And, and that's also where we targeted you, right? And then you joined us at Tabla. Well, then I, yeah, well, <laughs> people often ask me, what did I win? <laughs> um, because they forgot the swag that day. <laughs> True story, they did. Yeah. Um, so, so, maybe, so things happen. Yeah, maybe tell us a little bit about, like, so, I mean, you're competing here. We've got uh, Gil, one of the other CSMs yeah, on Gil. our team. Yep. Tell us a bit about the judges and, and that experience. Sure. So these yeah. three judges here um, were the three judges that we had at the, on the panel. So they had the scoring sheets. What you can't see is that they do have a monitor um, on the ground in front of them so they can see what we're doing. Uh, the audience is in front of us, 700, 600, 700 people. I don't know. I mean, you lose count after a while. And, um, and, so, they, and so Gil here is rallying up the crowd as we're like frantically trying to type in our things. Um, so that was a very terrifying experience. And, um, you know, I have to shout out to Corey because he did let me tell you that I crushed him. <laughs> <laughs> so storytelling so, won the day, right? Storytelling won the day. Yeah. So right. Corey built this great, amazing biz using that hour sundial. It just blew my mind. Um, but I just had a really great act. <laughs> I put on a good show. What can I say? Uh, and then Corey came on stage in New Orleans and it was you know, when I talk about building up proficiency, if I had not gone up against that kind of competition, I would have never upskilled my game in this way, ever. So does that sound, how was your, your you, you competed, is that? Uh, third place, that's, that's, that's good. 15 teams in third place. Okay, see I was only, you know, first out of three, so I, you know, your ratio is way better. That's awesome. And, and were you terrified, mortified, defeated? Did you go through the stages of grief and anxiety and bargaining? <laughs> like, I... <laughs> oh, you did more of the build, so yeah. you had somebody present for you. Smart. Yeah, that works. That works well. Why didn't I think Another of that? Common deck question. Yeah. Oh, sure. Hey, that's an awesome segue. How do you overcome fear do you and overcome anxiety? That fear? And so let me start sharing. Did you plant of... that question? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> so um, let me share. A, I mean, so I had to overcome a fear of this is complex and you know, difficult to put together. But uh, the customer and I, we put together an awesome uh, Viz Games in August last year. And in fact, when we ran that same event this year, um, we had, we had double the attendance, so we went from 300 people to over 500, okay? And we had double the submissions of this game compared to it. Um, and that's where we actually ran now with the virtual sessions from across the globe. Um, it just takes that first experience to see, it doesn't have to look like Ironvis, and I'm gonna show you a video in a minute. It doesn't look like Ironvis, but people are having fun. Uh, and in fact, this customer chose data that's specific to their pharmaceutical vertical, so they looked at oncology, pretty complex, that oncology phase three testing data. And uh, the executives that were on the, the judges panel were like blown away at how easy it was, um, how much insight the, the competitors could provide. It doesn't have to look like Ironvis. It just has to have a great kind of story, some analysis. And design plays into it. So one... Uh, one tip that I got from another CSM, don't have a best practices, how to build a dashboard, and what not to do just before your iron vest, because you know, sometimes people will start going, oh, they, they're doing all the bad things that were you know, recommended not to do. But um, you know, since I've been with Tableau in the last 18 months, I've run five of these events. And you're right, people are initially a little bit nervous. So what I typically do is I run a know before you go to answer all those kinds of questions. Um, it's in a friendly environment, it's your, it's your peers, and it's not 7,000, 18,000, 20,000 people, it's maybe 80 people, 300 people, 500 people. Um, and you'll see in a minute, uh, in fact, let me, let me show you that video you know, now. Just before yeah. you do that, I just wanna point out something else. I think what you said was really awesome because I was up there by myself, <clears throat> you know, party of one. Um, I'm an introvert, so that's okay for me. <laughs> Run off, collect the data, come back, report it, you know. Um, but to your point about fear, I think there's nothing wrong with partnering people up for your iron business. In fact, you're going to see in the video there's even more than one person. 
So partnering people up and giving them that sense of teamwork and collaboration and the ability to work together is such a great way to overcome fear because then people can specialize. If somebody really likes to present, great, talk. If somebody really just wants to build the biz and I'm, 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 I'm you, you talk about this thing, that this beautiful thing I built, you sell it. Um, then that's awesome too. Yeah. Um, so I think that's also something really good. And that's sort of what we do with Iron Viz as well. We pair these folks up with Tableau people the sous visitors as we call them, to make sure that they have the right guidance and coaching and mentoring. But everybody has something to offer in that partnership. Yeah. Whether you're new to Tableau or experienced with Tableau, the collaboration, uh, this is always done in programming, right? Paired programming. The minds do better work together. So I would suggest that. You know, have people come with a buddy or two buddies. So yeah. over to your great video. Uh, I, yeah, I think that's a great point. So teaming up because we, we all have different strengths, different superpowers. Uh, so, um, the three ladies that you see on the screen there are actually the winners of the first Viz Games I ever ran, and they were interns at this customer. All three of them were employed after that. Um, and another very interesting fact is they didn't know about Tableau Desktop. They actually built everything in web edit. Didn't even know there was a desktop product. And in fact, we had four product managers from our headquarters who had come uh, to run kind of like a mini uh, devs on stage, as you saw this week, and kind of complimented that. And they were blown away. Like, how do they actually build the stuff using web edit? So, a win for everyone. You know, the, the stakeholders loved to see what, what was being presented. The interns got really inspired, and everybody else got to see how easy this is, even in web edit. Um, so, let me show you the video without further ado, and you'll kind of get a sense of um, magic. You know, the fact that this is not Iron Viz. So, I was contemplating whether we play the music or not, because but I'll comment afterwards. Let's play the music as this is going. Or not. Or not. All right, so yeah, <laughs> you can see our interns. They're competing. There's Dave Ward, Biz Games man, having fun with the account executive. We're creating a wow factor. People are grabbing lunch. They're coming in. The judges panel are at the bottom. Uh, the community is getting engaged. Um, we've got three teams. So these are the three interns. Uh, another team of, of uh, analysts. And in fact, this last team, <laughs> they decided to join on the day. <laughs> yeah, and they had fun. I mean, so it's really not that complicated. We had our product consultants helping out with uh, lifelines. We're asking questions of the judges, asking questions of the, the competitors, engaging, engaging the audience, and just having fun. It's not supposed to be stressful. Um, so it doesn't look like Ironverse, but it has the same impact. It's a, they're, they're the judges panel, you know, con contemplating about the submissions. You know, you've got a clock, you create some competition, you create some excitement, and there are three winners. Uh, you know, great bag of swag. They also got permanent employment, so you know, great impact to them. Career um, development. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I think let's pause it at that. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's great timing. <laughs> But yeah, it, it was a great experience for me as someone hosting this and putting it together because my confidence just went through the roof. And so subsequent events with this checklist, in fact, Viz Games Man has got this technique and you can try this. Uh, some of his customers say, we want to put this together. He emails them the checklist and says, there you go, run Viz Games. It's as simple as the checklist and there's a couple of resources online. So um, obviously you can reach out to your Tableau team. Where are you going to help? help you and support you, be successful. Um, so that could either be you know, someone in the account exec team, the customer success team, uh, and we're a collaborative team. So even if your account exec doesn't know what they're doing around Viz Games, they'll reach out to us. So I, I've run a couple of Viz Games for uh, customers where there isn't a customer success manager. But get it going, it's not complicated. And once you get it started, it just snowballs. It's, so. I'm I'm wondering why the closing is the next slide because it's not the right closing slide. So, it is. Is Good. it? Yeah. No. Oh, it is. Oh, look at that. We're already there. Yeah. Hey, we didn't talk about judging. No, we didn't. Okay, so go back. Yeah. All right. Let's do that. <laughs> any, any questions before we kind of talk about judging comments? D did that video make sense? No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, let me just repeat yeah. the question. So yeah. um, basically you're seeing, it was interesting that our example interns won, and what you're seeing is that you have a high success rate among the intern population when you're doing 
fizz games yourself. And so the question is, are we seeing the same thing? Yeah, I would agree. I, I mean, I yeah. was an intern. Yeah. Yeah, last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, not <laughs> not only is it impacting people's careers, but you know, it's creating proficiency across a community. Obviously, as interns are coming in, they, they think differently about data and about technology. They didn't even bought the interns at that customer desktop. I don't I don't know. I'm just connecting to the data using Tableau Server, and I'm creating a beautiful uh, visualization. And the judges, including you know the, the chief data officer, said that's the winning insight on this oncology phase B. So pretty intense data, but relevant to the customer. Um, so not only is it building you know, a talent pool, but it's also, it's showing your stakeholders how easy this is to, to be put together using Tableau. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I don't notice the same trend. Um, and I'm not saying that it's, I mean, you know, but, and I think interns are fearless, right? I mean, you got 12 weeks to make an impact and someone says get up on stage in front of all the important people. Yeah, you're going to say yes. Yeah. I mean, who wouldn't? And why aren't we doing the same thing? Even though we've been at companies for, I mean, I was at my last one for 15 years. Anybody here more than like five years at their company? Right? Yeah. You kind of get into this mindset, right? But these are, and you think, ah, you know, I have enough visibility. I have enough call, you know, I have enough of that. I'm going to give someone else a turn. Carpe diem, people. Like, seize the day. If you're asked, get up there. Um, because it's you know it is such a great experience, but yes, people who are more embedded with Tableau on a day-to-day -day basis. So if that's if you're in the type of organization that gives a lot of that work to interns and co-ops, uh, leadership development program candidates, then you're going to kind of feed that. And if your organizational culture is a little bit different, you may see that differently. So one thing I would think about is is that because you know that's the kind of culture that we have, or is and that's fine, or is that because um, we're really not um, incenting other people or providing them with the encouragement at a management level to do this. So Adrian had talked about the importance of executive sponsorship. Yeah, I mean, why not start a competition between your management team to see whose team wins biz games? Like what, you know, have them put some stuff on the line. I mean, you know, they love doing this stuff, right? Like, uh, you know, dunk tanks. If anyone does a dunk tank at their company picnic, you know, whoever loses gets in the dunk tank. Like, find something to get these exec sponsors kind of going a little head to head, and you're going to see some magical things happen with your biz games. I promise. I agree. I mean, one of my customers, uh, we actually had to get a fourth auditor judge from the finance team because the judges on the panel were aligned to the teams, and so the the auditor provided like a, you know, you can really make it fun. You can. Some of the teams actually have like. You know, as they're coming into the room, they'll have supporters with T-shirts and flags. And I uh, saw that at one of uh, Sadarshan's customers. That was, that was brilliant. Um, one thing that came to mind as you spoke about the impact, um, you could also run a Viz Games equivalent when you're doing newbie training. So when you're training people on how to use Tableau, instead of making it a formal competition, give them a data set that you want them to hit the road running you know, straight away. Um, they can maybe compete for some swag, but it's in a, a newbie, informal setting. And so we've done that with a couple of our customers. We, we run a newbie uh, one-hour kind of enablement session and then provide them with some of your data. Connect to your server, and off we go. So... Judging. Yeah. Judging's quick. I mean, I was also... So I've done the full... <laughs> I've done the full stack now. I've been a competitor, I've been an organizer, and I've been a judge. Um, the judging thing was pretty awesome because... I was sitting next to another, they, this company had actually had it sponsored. So their winner got a MacBook. I was like, wow, that's pretty awesome. Like, <laughs> really cool stuff. But, the, but the, you know, in, in the way that sponsors do, right, you kind of say, okay, now give us a judge, and the sponsors go, okay, this guy. Well, this poor guy um, had never seen Tableau before ever. <laughs> never. And he, and he sits there, and he's like, and, you know, I'm, I'm sitting next to the one of the exec people in the company, and there's me, and then... Um, one of the people who didn't recognize me in my Captain Outlier costume today, actually. Um, and I'm sitting next to the guy. And uh, we're watching these people. He's like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. I'm like, you're going to be fine. Here's the score sheet, right? He didn't, that's the training he got. Here's the score sheet. <laughs> Anyways, he watches this whole thing. And then, and then he's like, wow. Like his eyes were riveted to the screen. He couldn't stop looking at yeah. what was being built. And he was so blown away by these people. It was a, it was a data set on... Um, um, uh, uh, Netflix ratings, and it was like Game of Thrones time, that episode, <laughs> that episode. So he's looking at this thing, and he's like, wow. 
wow. And he just came away, and he happened to be a, a, a database provider. And I, I bet you they're using Tableau now. But he was just really, really impressed, and he found it really easy to judge. He found it very difficult to pick. That tells you a level of competition. Um, but as a judge, it is actually really simple, and you don't need to provide a lot of education. So if that guy from the vendor could do it, the sponsor could do it, then I'm pretty sure your execs can do it as well. And I really do encourage you to get to that level and ask and ask and ask, because this is another way in which, um, do we have community leaders here? Like people are trying to lead community, people are trying to engage community. Yeah, this is how you showcase the great work you're doing in a subtle yet direct way. Um, yeah, it's also a fun way to engage with the judges, because as you notice with Iron Biz, you know, while the, 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 the clock is ticking down, uh, the MC is asking the judges questions. So you, you can prime them, but you can actually use this as a platform for them to share what do they see as a strategic aspect to the data. In other words, what is important for that executive and, and he's got his whole community there watching this entertaining event, sharing this is why I believe this type of data or this type of insight is important for us in terms of a cost saving, revenue generation, or some kind of insight. So I've got a sense that there are quite a few questions around you know, curating data, identifying teams, and I know it's the end of conference and you guys must be kind of like really at the end of your energy. <laughs> So, you know, I, I think it's probably a good idea for us um, just to open for some questions and then we'll run the closing. So, I don't know if, if you guys right. can help with the microphone. Uh, Catherine, thank you so much. Yep, and, uh, and let, me, let me just, pl we'll plug it again, but in case you have the need to catch a plane or some other thing, we're gonna forgive you, don't worry. If you need to leave, leave. But please. Yeah, please, please don't forget. I think to that's complete, just me. Uh, Does this work? Survey. We'd like this to be run okay. after, after after Ironviz next year. So if you rate this well, you know, maybe we can get a better spot. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh no, you're giving it away. Okay, so before we go to questions, let me just do the closing slide then. Um, this is me. Hey, different hair color, by the way. You can't see it under the helmet, but it's brown. Um, this is Radar, and hopefully, um, after we answer your questions, um, we're gonna leave you with this feeling of sailing over a jump. Um, so there you go, it's not always about, uh, yeah. oh, I promise I am successful sometimes. Um, but the idea is to make you comfortable to do this and the fact that the jump is so low here, it's not very high, well, yeah, it's, it's not very high. Um, you know, it's, it's easy to do this yeah. when you have the checklist, when you follow a few simple steps and when you make it your own, you know, whether that's live, asynchronous, like yeah. Viz Games right ahead, um, whether you bring in multiple people on teams or have, you know, the lone wolf team, whether you bring in executive sponsors or you bring in outside sponsors, um, whatever it is that you choose to do, um, hopefully you're finding that feels a little bit more easy and a little bit more awesome, a little bit more comfortable. With that, we're gonna open it up with questions. Perfect. I really appreciate you guys participating at the, you know, on this last yeah. session of, of conference. And, and you guys had so many choices between sessions. I mean, I was trying to poach the people from the room across the hall. <laughs> they weren't buying it. I think I scared them off, I don't know. Um, but we know you have so many choices of sessions and it's the last session of conference and you chose to close it out with us. So that's just amazing to me. So thank you for choosing us, for spending your time with us, yeah. for indulging us in our costume habit um, and, and for your great questions. We're gonna hang out for a little bit afterwards. So if there's something you wanna ask, you didn't wanna ask in front of the whole room, please do. Yeah. Um, if you have something afterwards, you could probably find us pretty easily. Uh, we had our emails up there a little earlier. Oh yeah, let's put um, that back up. The session will be posted too, so in perpetuity, people will be reaching out to us about, uh, about Viz Games. Bonus points if you call us by our superhero names. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much thank again for guys. attending. Have a great Enjoy, travel safe, yeah. get home safely. Thank you.